What's going on, man? How are you doing today, Cade? I'm good, Drew. How are you? I'm doing great, man. Enjoyed the weekend. It was nice, relaxing. Uh, you know, got to hang out with you and the boys, go golfing. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, yesterday was just a blast to relax. So it was nice. But uh, looking forward to the next meetup, that is for sure. So yeah. it'll be the 28th from 5.30 to 8 at the uh, at the Sands Club as usual. And then I do want to point this out now because uh, it will be on the horizon. But August, we are changing the date to the, I believe it's the 28th as well, actually. But it's a Thursday, the last Thursday of August rather than the last Friday. Uh, it was a little bit of a, not a mix-up, but we the club was closed and so we didn't have access to it. And so uh, we did shift the date. So just as a reminder for future date, August 28th and July 28th are the two next NGRN meetings. Yeah, and the I believe August is the 31st, actually. Oh, that's right. It is the 31st. You're right. You're right. Yeah, Good so yeah, la chance. last day of August will be next month's meetup. Um, but it should be fun, right? Because isn't that when they're doing their rally and, and stuff? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so, so it'll be anyway. <laughs> a rally. You'll get to hear from me and Guy. It'll be a rally. It's going to be a good – the August then will be a really good meetup. That'll be so, fun for sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, sweet. Well, then I will dive right into uh, my metrics and everything that's going on. So starting with the S&P 500, last week it was up 2.5% year to date up about 18 and a half percent. So we've had really, really Gosh, awesome dang. returns. Yeah. The S and P has been really awesome to us this year. Uh, the Russell 2000 again, smaller index up about 3% the last week and year to date up about 11.75%. And then the Dow Jones up last week, about a percent and a half year to date up about four and a half percent. So we've seen really, really good returns. Again, one call to action that I want to hit on is don't stop investing. Like this is unfortunately when people start to see these returns and say, oh, I missed it. I missed the opportunity. So I'm going to stop now or I'm not going to hop in the market because, you know, it's already back up and it's too high. And when you hear those numbers, right, you hear the up 18 percent, you're like, oh, you know, it's there's it's just there's no point. What's the point? You still have to remember that last year we were down 25%. So we haven't even hit, you know, that, that percentage that we are breaking even at all time highs yet. So we are still at a great buying opportunity. Things are still heavily discounted, even though they are up on the year. So don't let that deter you. Even when we do see a super green market, you know, it's all about time in the market, not timing the market. So just continue forward don't let what's going on shift yours positively or negatively because the other thing too is is people have FOMO right and they have like fear of missing out they want to just hop in the market all at once so then they just start dumping a bunch of money because like gotta catch it and then you see a market maybe decline a little bit and you get discouraged so don't change your habits continue with your strategic investments and keep doing those monthly deposits that's my call to action but but Kate let's hear from you that was beautiful, Drew. Put a tear Thank in my you. eye. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to be going over the Vail market. Super strong market. Super strong market. So sales price for June of 2023 came in at $398,100. That was the average sales price in, in June. Isn't that like $60,000 above the Tucson Average home sales yeah, price is I think, like I think Tucson is like 330 to 340. Yeah. Wow. That's yeah. Nuts. Mail, super strong market. Um, new listings coming to the market is 896 in June of 2023. To give you guys some perspective, in June of 2022, it was 1100. So substantially less, um, you know, a year over year, which that tells me that. You know, as far as supply goes, there's not as much as last year. And even last year was still insanely hot. So if you're trying to move into Vail or any of these suburbs of Tucson, you know, you are competing with a lot of people who are trying to get a house that's not there. So, you know, just keep that in mind. Um, so close sales, you know, we actually, they saw an increase a little bit month over month from 727 to 745. 
So a little bit more actions going on, you know, substantially less than last year. But again, that's just due to the fact that there's not as much supply. Um, and then month supply, uh, this is, you know, your absorption rate has stayed consistent for the past three months in Vail at 2.7. So, you know, if all of the, if all of the activity, you know, or excuse me, if all of the new listings that came to market just stopped today, it would take 2.7 months with the current velocity of the market to completely sell out. So that's still a very strong seller's market um, going on in bail. And again, it's just due to that supply and demand. You know, I can't, can't say it enough. We're seeing this even in Saudi and Green Valley as well. Uh, just there's nothing out there for what people want. And so the stuff that is out there is getting spooked up um, for asking price. And I think I pulled metrics for specifically Sawadita like a couple of days ago. And I think over the past like six months or maybe it was like, uh, you know, three months, um, every listing has gotten a hundred percent, if not more of the listing price. So um, as, as a market as a whole, so just still very, very strong. Um, so again, if you guys are realtors, if you're a consumer and buyer, or if you're a seller, keep that in mind. Sellers are still very, very strong right now. Um, and, and sometimes though, that's creating some opportunities because we're seeing some homes that are way overpriced, right? Um, and these sellers just think that, you know, due to the market, they can just get whatever they want for it. And that's causing some of these homes to stay on the market for a long time. So if you're an agent, maybe something to consider is if your client wants a deal or feel like they've gotten a deal, go look at some of the, the listings that have been on the market for 60 to 80 days or even 120 plus days. That could really um, be some opportunities um, for you guys. So that's all I have for real estate. Um, I want to now go over our quote um, that's going to be kind of the focus for the rest of this this call. So this quote is from B.C. Forbes, the founder of Forbes magazine. And he said, if you don't drive your business, you will be driven out of business. And so, Drew, I know that you and I were talking a little bit before we started um, recording this. Um, you know, what does what does driving your business mean? If someone's new to business, they have no idea. I mean, in theory, I guess that kind of makes sense to me. But what does driving your business actually mean? Absolutely. Well, I think it's it ultimately comes down to just your process and your overall white glove experience that you're willing to provide for your clients, right? So making sure that no matter what, you have a solidified process that's the same for everybody and that it's the same sort of customer service that you would expect to feel if you were the consumer on the consumer end. Right. And so making sure that you're given all of the proper and adequate information, you are constantly staying involved and on top of your leads and referrals. You're constantly out there marketing, meeting new people, meeting new clients. And then when you do get those clients, never being too busy to provide a great experience. Right. I think the most detrimental thing is, and we kind of talked about this a little bit, like getting so much business that you get too busy but still making sure that you're having enough time in the day to give everybody that amazing and awesome experience that you can. So I think, you know, setting up those systems, setting up those appointments, those ways to figure out, you know, and I, and I, this is going to probably sound awful or bad, but making sure that those people who aren't really interested, maybe they read something and it sparked a fire under them, but then, you know, it kind of dies out. You're not spending too much time trying to get them rather than actually being able to get out there and get new clients and get the people who are interested. Because we all have those people that, you know, say that they're super interested and want to start saving for retirement or want to buy a home, but they're just not there yet. And so not making sure that A, you don't make them feel left out. You're providing them with homework, but you're putting the ball in their court to say, okay, you need, this is what you guys need to do first. Get yourself pre-qualified then come back and we can actually get you into the home that you want or into the retirement vehicles that you're looking for. And I hope that didn't sound too bad, but you know, just making sure you have a good differentiator qualifying process to really segue segment and segue your clients accordingly. So, but I'd love to reverse the question, man. What does that look like for you? Yeah. 
No, yeah, I think it's it's similar just to what you said. I think it's having systems and a process that people can't expect. Why do you think McDonald's, some of these fast food chains, Amazon, like just think of these huge, massive businesses, right? Costco, Walmart, you can go to any one of these businesses anywhere in the country and it's the same feel. It's the same thing. It's like you're back home at your local one, right? I could go to any McDonald's in the world and get the same freaking Big Mac. You know what I mean? I don't know if, if the Big Mac's everywhere in the world, but you know what I'm saying. And Absolutely. so I've heard it said specifically by another realtor that I follow and he's out of San Francisco. And he says, how can I create my business and residential sales similar to that of McDonald's, Costco, Amazon? And what he concluded was that every single one of these businesses, as massive as they are, they all have very, very simple processes, right? And so if you can, instead of working in your business, take a step out of the car for a second, right? Look at the vehicle that you're operating and running and say, how can I make this simpler that someone else can maybe run it, right? And so that was his whole mindset and process to create ultimately the insane operation that he did and his business specifically was all VA. So he was doing, you know, netting a million dollars a year and all of his operations was VAs and freaking the Philippines. Right. And so like this guy's 26 years old and managed to do that. And so, but ultimately every single person that used his company uh, got that same level of service that you mentioned, Drew. And so I think when, you know, Forbes is talking about here, if you don't drive it, if you don't operate it, if you don't create systems, if you don't manage it, if you don't build upon it, then you'll be driven out of it, right? Because if there's no system and process that can be replicated and simplified that someone else can manage it and expand it, then you're never going to grow. And so, um, you know, even if you do it yourself, that doesn't mean you have to hire help. But if you don't have a system that you can follow and you make it simple for people, then what's going to happen is you're going to get all these leads and you can't service any of them. And so, you know, especially for, you know, you and me and a lot of our viewership in our sphere, a lot of us are commission based structure, right? So, we have to create systems or else we're just going to screw ourselves because every single day we're going to come in, we're going to go to work and we're not going to be really doing anything that helps our business grow. We're just going to be staying busy. And so I think it's super important to, you know, pay attention to this quote and understand that you have to, as a operator of your business, be in charge of driving the vehicle and that looks like putting together those systems and processes that ultimately can offer that white glove service that you mentioned. I love that. I love that. And to kind of build a little bit on like in our previous conversation before we started to record, you know, we were comparing our processes. Both of us have gone through each other's processes, but we are specifically talking about qualifying leads and sort of how we talked. And I want to tell, you know, the viewership that it's funny that we are in dramatically different industries, but have the same process of qualifying leads as well as the same process of how we handle warm leads and how we do this and how we kind of take that white glove experience. So going back to the whole vehicle, it is just a vehicle. Your business, your specific niche is maybe a different model than everybody else's, but in the same way, we all drive and operate the same way. So making sure that we just have those systems set into play. And one book recommendation I will make is The E-Myth. The E-Myth is very, very good at talking about establishing systems and the importance of, you know, being the biggest small business you can be. As I had mentioned previously about McDonald's on a, a few videos ago, you know, making sure you, you just, you give that white glove, it feels the same everywhere. Uh, but you do have, you know, that same situation that's replicatable. So you can bring on new people underneath you, expand your business but it still feels the same way. So, yeah. And dude, I think it's, you know, it's tough when you're working in the business day to day, trying to make a sale, trying to, you know, service everyone and do the best that you can. 
it is hard to take a step out, put a different thinking cap on and say, how would it be like, what would it take to actually make this process simpler to the point where I could hire someone to do it? It's hard, right? And I, I got to be honest with you, even I hired my first VA and he's doing a lot of my cold calling for me. It has made my life so much better. He sends me about a lead per day and I'm, I'm doing a test trial. So I'm going to hire him for six months, look at all the leads he supplied and then see, you know, if it's cost effective. But anyway, I thought there's no way I would be able to just hire someone that could do cold calling for me. There's no way, right? All these questions start coming into my mind. Oh my gosh, my VA is specifically from Pakistan. So my initial fear was how the heck are people going to talk to him when he has an accent? Because if it was me, the first thing I would do is just hang up. And so that's the fear, right? That's the, the belief that's holding you back. And then I hired him and guess what? That wasn't even an issue. People who were interested actually just talked to him right? Some people have trouble understanding him, but for the most part, if they're interested, they'll talk with him. And so I want to encourage everyone watching, try to keep an open mind when you switch those thinking caps from being in the driver's seat to stepping out and evaluating the car, right? So when you're stepping out and evaluating the car, take those beliefs and those questions and those fears and just throw them away and just try stuff, try it. Find someone who's maybe done it successfully and then try it. And you'd probably be amazed at what you can start building and creating just because you stepped on that limiting belief. You took your shot and it ended up working, right? Because um, that was that was a big jump for me was, I, you know, there's no way that this will work. And so now I'm in kind of the test trial phase and it it seems to be working for the most part. So um, that that's probably going to be the biggest call to action for me. Take those limiting beliefs away. Start creating systems and processes for your business that ultimately can, you know, provide that white glove service. You don't you don't want to create systems and processes that jeopardize the white glove service, right? You want, you know, processes and systems that enhance the white glove service. I think we have to make that clear too. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. It's like buying a car with bells and whistles. Like, you know, when you get into that car and it's got a seat warmer and it's got, you know, the, the, the really nice sound system with the really nice speakers, right? Like you might not ever use them, but to know that your car has them is really nice. Same exact yeah. thing. Right. You know, you might never ever come into a situation where you need it, but at least you have it. And it's, and it's not, it's available to you. It's not, you know, again, trying to trying to come when the time is needed, putting out the fire. So I love it. I love it. Yeah, that's, it, it makes me think of, uh, too, I, a part of my system, um, and Drew, you could probably talk on this, too, is I have weekly schedules. So every day I focus on a different highlighted person in my business that I'm supposed to reach out to. And as an example, Thursdays are my past client days. So every Thursday I dedicate an hour and, you know, I text or call or message all of my past clients, updating them on kind of what's going on. And back to your comment of just like the car where you have all these bells and whistles and things that you may not use. Well, that's similar to the situation I find myself in a lot of the time where I'm reaching out to my past clients. I never hear anything back. I rarely hear anything back, right? Probably 50% of them reach back out to me and then the other 50 don't. But then... They call me when they want to get in, you know, buy a house or sell their house again. Right. And so that's the importance of having that system. It's like, okay, they may never get back to you, but when the time comes where they do want to buy or sell, they're going to be calling you because you've managed because of your system to stay in touch with them. Right. Yeah. So just like that bells and whistles scenario. Absolutely. And it's, it's all about staying top of mind. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've had like, you know, that I've done a bad job and someone says, oh, you know, I bought life insurance with this carrier and I'm like, well, I sell life insurance. You should have come and talked to me. And they're like, oh, I thought you were the investment guy. And like, I've done a bad job not explaining the large capacity of what my business is. And I've also mm -hmm. done a bad job not actually staying front of mind, top of mind to be the person that they call when they need something. So yeah, 
I mean, again, establishing system, what that quote that they always say, like, you'll never rise to your highest goal, you'll fall to your lowest system. Is that what it is or something like that? Yeah, it's like people, people don't succeed based on their goals, they succeed to the level of their systems or something like that. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, systems are everything. So again, be the driver of your business, drive with confidence and drive with attitude and you'll go places. <laughs> yes, sir. Awesome, dude. Well, um, I think that's all we had for today. Is that right? That's it. That's it, man. So again, just to recap everything, uh, 28th of this month is our first NGR, or the, the next NGRN, Sands Club. And then the 31st of August is that next NGRN. So yeah, looking forward to it. Cool, brother. Well, thank you so much for the call. Everyone go crush it. And uh, we'll see everyone next week. That's it. We'll see you all next week.